Angel of Death is the label given to caregivers who play God and decide whether the people under their care should live or die. Being that they are taking care of the sick, their crimes usually go unnoticed for a long time. In the 1900s, one of those Angel of Deaths, and also a serial killer, was Jane Toppin. She murdered without a conscience. Even though she knew that it was wrong to kill people, she continued to do so with no sympathy. She would go on to murder 31 people, but there are speculations that it could be to the hundreds. She was quoted with saying, that is my ambition, to have killed more people, more helpless people than any man or woman who has ever lived. The 1956 movie, Bad Seed, was based off Jane Topin. The movie is about a little girl who has a darkness inside her. She manipulates people, lies, and has no empathy or regard for another living creature's life. It comes to light when another girl is murdered. I won't spoil the movie for you, but I recommend it. Back to Topin, who was born on Nora Kelly, to Irish immigrants. When she was little, her mother died of tuberculosis. Her father took Topin and one of her sisters to the Boston Female Asylum, an orphanage for female children. After he dropped them off, he never saw them again. Which is good, because documents from the asylum note that the two girls were, quote, rescued from a very miserable home, unquote. Her father, who people knew as Kelly the Crack, went insane. From records, an older sister also went insane and spent her life in a mental institution. So as you see, mental health issues ran in the family. After her father's death, Honora's Kelly was placed at the age of five with a family in Lowell, Massachusetts. This is when her name was changed to Jane Topin. Even though she was Irish, the lady of the house, Anne Topin, hated them, so she lied and said Jane was Italian. Jane would also tell her classmates outlandish lies about her family, such as her family was sailing around the world. It didn't raise any eyebrows at the time, because who wouldn't lie about having an insane father and sister? At the age of 18, Anne died, and her daughter Elizabeth took charge of the house. Jane stayed on as a servant. At the age of 19, Topin became engaged. However, she was jilted by her fiance. This is when she became even more withdrawn and aggressive. It seems this was her trigger because until that point, Jane seemed like a normal person. Jane eventually seemed to have recovered and went on to study nursing. She got the nickname of Jolly Jane because she was always upbeat with a smile on her face. She was well-liked, but her supervisors were concerned with her obsession with autopsies. Even though no one knows for sure if Jane killed any people during her time as a student, Topin insists she killed at least a dozen. She started treating these people like guinea pigs to perfect the perfect drug. Jane decided to use morphine and atropine after these tests. After her studies were complete, she was offered a position at Massachusetts General Hospital in 1889, but was fired when they found out that she was tampering with medical records. Also, she never was able to practice as a hospital staff member again. They didn't consider it due to malice, but incompetence, which was a grave mistake.
Jane became a private nurse and in eight years became one of the most successful private nurses in the Boston area. In 1895, an elderly couple called Israel and Levy Dunham became the unfortunate landlords of Jane Topin. She considered Israel feeble and fussy. She poisoned him, and everyone thought he had died of a heart attack. Jane patiently waited two years to kill his wife, Levy. In 1899, her foster sister, Elizabeth, asked Jane to come visit because she was suffering from depression. It didn't take long for Jane to start poisoning Elizabeth and eventually killing her. Jane is said to have told the police after she was caught, quote, I held her in my arms and watched with delight as she gasped her life out, unquote. After killing Elizabeth, she tried to get Elizabeth's widower, Oramel Bingham, to marry her. She decided to kill his 77-year-old housekeeper. Even after offering her services as the replacement housekeeper, and probably even more than that, Oramel rejected her. Her idea was to poison him, get him sick, and nurse him back to health. That didn't work either. He kicked her out of his house and life. She tried committing suicide using her concoction of morphine and atropine, but she survived to kill even more people. It wasn't until 1901 when her murderous activities were discovered after she killed the entire Davis family in Catamount, Massachusetts. This is when the police arrested Jane Topin, a.k.a. Jolly Jane, a.k.a. Angel of Mercy. During the trial a year later, Jane confessed that the killing of innocent people aroused her sexually. One time, she crawled into bed with a female victim and sexually assaulted her until the victim died. This is what makes Jane Topin a different type of female serial killer. Females usually don't get sexual gratification from their murders. She said, If I had been a married woman, I probably would not have killed all those people. I would have had my husband, my children, and my home to take up my mind. However, I don't think it matters if she was married or not. Jane was a bad seed from the start. After killing over 31 people, probably more like hundreds, Topin was found not guilty by reason of insanity. She spent the rest of her life in a mental institution until she died in 1938. She was used to taunting the mental hospital staff and saying, get some morphine, dearie, and we will go out in the ward. You and I will have a lot of fun seeing them die. So that's the life of Jane Topin. What did everyone think? I will have to say that she's probably one of the scariest serial killers that I have read up on or seen documentaries on. And all I know is, I hope never to encounter a Jane Topin if I ever have to go to the hospital. Please share your thoughts in the comments below what you think about Jane Topin. Would she be someone you would want as a nurse if you had to stay at the hospital or if you needed a private one? I will have to say that out of all the female killers I have researched, she is definitely one of the most disturbing ones. I haven't found one yet who gets sexual gratification from murdering like Jane Topin, but there are thousands of female killers, so there should be one out there and I just haven't found her yet. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do so now. Hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when there is a new video. I will be posting one every week. If you haven't checked out the podcast, we are now in episode 38, and I try to post a new episode every Tuesday. If there's something that happens, it usually gets pushed to Wednesday, but I post one every week. Thank you, and I will see you next week.